we've all probably heard the term big data, another term that could be many things to many different people. Uh, I'm referencing here a, a definition of big data that is in a, in a paper called Data Analytics in the Era of Industry 4.0 by Jane Darrow and some other authors. This was in the AACE Source magazine in April 2019. And during this presentation, the, the uh, graphic that I grabbed from Booz Allen Hamilton was actually in this paper. And so there's, there's some things that I'm referencing out of this paper in this presentation. I would recommend you also uh, search out that, that paper and read it. But again, I'm trying to use the term in general to refer to the capture of all the data that may be useful to our organizations and that provides value in one way or the other. Of course, we're, we've always been able to capture data. Again, when I first started working for this EPC firm back in the 1980s, uh, they had a, a vast library, uh, almost a, a half of a floor of a, of a building dedicated to the library that collected project closeout reports. At that time, each of those project re closeout reports was comprised mainly of four or five multiple four or five inch wide binders containing a combination of mostly handwritten reports, maybe some typed reports, and usually some very poor quality copies of existing uh, project supporting documents. So obviously it was difficult and time consuming for me as an estimator to find the data I was maybe looking for. And at that time, try, it was very difficult to try to work up the analysis of the data. I was basically trying to manually perform calculations uh, from the, the information I was getting using a 10 key calculator. So, you know, boy, have changed, things changed since then. Just a few years ago, we may have thought we were all stars in being able to uh, create pivot tables and maybe run regression analysis using spreadsheets. Well, now we're on the verge of using artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities that can quickly sort through years of digital project records, finding the specific projects and data that match the characteristics of our new project. I'm not trying to do that in any manual way. I'm simply gonna specify the characteristics and let artificial intelligence and machine learning sort through all this and collect just that information that, that is pertinent to me and present that back. It's gonna automatically normalize that data for time and location and currency by accessing both historical and current economic indices. Again, that might be able to support uh, discovering the best set of metrics that I might be able to use to validate my estimates. So our organizations need to prepare then for the collection of big data and the big data technologies and the technologists, those information uh, specialists are basically concerned with the following characteristics often known as the five Ds. They need to be concerned with the volume of data to be collected and stored, as well as identifying where to store that. Obviously, data storage capabilities have increased exponentially and they're still increasing while getting less expensive all the time. So we're, we're all gonna become getting used to the terms of terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, and zettabytes. Uh, but the bottom line really is that we have the information to inexpensively store vast amounts of our project histories. So we need to start collecting all that data now. The analysis may be in the, done in the future. Let's start collecting that data so we have it available. We're gonna be concerned with the variety of data. And what that really means is it's more important to collect data than not. No longer constrained by the volume of data, we can start collecting both structured data as well as unstructured data. That unstructured data can be analyzed by the computing power, by our AI and machine learning systems uh, to organize it as needed in the future. 
so greater and greater computing power is going to make sense out of all this unstructured data. So we can start collecting not only paper data, computer records, we can also start collecting uh, video presentations of meetings. We can collect audio meeting minutes. All of that data will eventually be able to be handled by these new technologies. We need to be concerned with the velocity of data, uh, the speed at which it's created and captured. And nowadays we can collect a lot of data in real time, as opposed to just at a set interval, uh, which has been common in the past. So now I can track actual hours that construction equipment is being utilized on a minute by minute basis for a current project. I might then be able to use that information. I can refer to that and use that to help support estimating the construction equipment costs as, as part of the overall construction indirect costs for a new project. I do need to be concerned with the veracity, the quality of the data collected. But again, I'm gonna be able to rely on artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms that's gonna be able to sort through this data and discover and identify where I might have gaps in, or errors in data. And then I can deal with that accordingly. And finally, I need to deal with the variability, uh, the considerations of the consist consistency of the data collected, uh, the potential range of values within all these differing types of data. But this is what the technologists are gonna be worried with. I need to understand these issues, but uh, we're gonna rely on the information technologists to try to solve that. And there's a lot of, and I've mentioned some of the words, there's a lot of various technologies that are related to big data. So obviously computing power, data storage, and software such as those incorporating artificial intelligence and machine learning concepts. The internet of things is related to the connectivity of all of these things. And yes, the internet of things is a, is a real term. It's what makes your smart home work. It turns on the light when you enter a room. It may automatically start your car simply as you approach the door. It's a technology that is supplemented by things such as near field communication devices, uh, radio frequency identification sensors, and those sorts of things. These are the things that that are gonna allow me, um, how I could determine the, how much, where construction equipment is utilized on my project and how often it's utilized is because it's gonna have a near field communication device attached to it, communicating back to a database. So it's tracking idle time, when it's used, where it's used. And again, all of that information may, may be useful to me as an estimator to help prepare my estimates. It's not, it's, not unrealistic to consider that eventually all the major components installed on a facility will have a radio frequency identification device attached to it that's going to identify uh, when it was purchased, when it was installed, when it was last main maintained. Every worker at the construction site may have a badge or an ID also containing an RFID device communicating on his daily activities, the tools he's using, the materials he's requesting. And we're gonna have access to all of this real-time data for similar projects that we as estimators can then use to better plan with, determine the best hours to use in our estimate to install that lineal meter of pipe or that cubic meter of concrete foundation. I'll have better information to understand what was the true productivity adjustment when piping was installed on the fifth level of a structure as opposed to the ground level of a structure. Uh, we're gonna be in a position to vastly improve our estimating capabilities to cost, price, and validate estimates. In this data-driven future then, we're gonna be able to collect 
in a digital environment, much more data and information than we ever could with paper. So again, what do I do with it? Well, we're gonna be able to enhance our data collection through data analysis. Again, this amount of data will be overwhelming. It's gonna be data mining, artificial intelligence, data analytics, and the development of predictive cost models that's gonna turn all of that collected data into useful information to help us improve our estimating capabilities and thereby support better decision-making by our stakeholders. Artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities are gonna find the data for us. Sort through it, normalize it, see that it meets quality expectations, and provide the analytics to get us the answers that we as the estimators are looking for. I'll be able to access every purchase order for every project across my organization in any continent to develop a model for estimating the cost of a heat exchanger. Or quickly access the online vendor catalogs of 50 different vendors to obtain a current price for a six inch gate valve. I'll be able to access government and other economic indices to generate the best escalation forecast for every category of commodity in my estimate based on macroeconomic models of raw material pricing and expected labor conditions and other market conditions. So this AI engine, the artificial intelligence engine is gonna be able to research detailed project records to more accurately determine the adjustments that affect labor productivity, for height congestion, distance of the work from the laydown areas, and just a, a myriad of, of other considerations. Uh, we're gonna have the data available. We need to be able to describe what we want out of the data, and then our computing power is gonna be able to find, sort, and present that information back to us. Fuzzy logic, artificial neural networks, regression analysis, case-based reasoning, random forest, evolutionary computing, machine learning. These are all the concepts, the technologies that are going to enable advanced analytics that we can apply in our estimating processes. But again, as I've kind of mentioned, we don't have to be the experts in any of those technologies. We're going to rely on the information management specialists to implement those solutions for us. What we do need to understand as estimators is the data that is out there that's available. Which specific data to mine to provide the information and the metrics that I'm interested in? And then the technology will work for us to get the answer we're looking for. We're gonna be in a much better position to compare similar current and historical projects based on cost, schedule, and other performance metrics to support estimate validation. We're gonna be able to to access normalized historical data uh, in, a, in a great way. These technologies are not gonna replace us as estimators. They're gonna augment our capabilities so we can spend more time on the analysis rather than that tedious work of scope definition, costing and pricing. So these advanced analytics is gonna support improved information and validation. The result is that we can provide better information to support decision-making that relies on our cost estimates. So again, we're gonna be able to enhance estimates through these types of technologies and these improved predictive metrics.